Okay. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, so again, uh, we have uh, in our um, oh, welcome, uh, there is a new person coming in, Nurhani Najwa. Okay, by the way, uh, all right, so this is, I think, week number 10 uh, on our Ask the Experts uh, session, Saturday, Saturday Night Live session <laughs> with uh, our Fit Unit and PRKPP and also uh, to this week, we are going to talk about self-control. So on the panel, uh, we have uh, Prof. Muhammad uh, you know, to talk about the psychology, the mental health, and we also have a bit of input from my, my side and uh, Coach Wong, uh, Coach Francis to talk about uh, health, wellness, and fitness. So uh, let's get started. So um, uh, over to you, Prof. Okay, thank you, Felicia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening, salam sejahtera to all my friends and to all new listeners and uh, viewers. Uh, thank you for being with me tonight. Uh, this is our so-called uh, regular series that we have every Saturday night. So tonight, uh, I think I need to talk about, and I believe I need to talk about self-control because uh, over time I've been seeing quite a number of uh, so-called client uh, over possibly even last week quite a number of clients came to me and uh, with a lot of problems and all in all it goes down to the problem of actually whether you are in control or you are really out of control situation so I think this topic is very important so I'm going to share with you uh, my slide Okay, uh, okay, I don't know whether you can see this screen or not. Is it shared already? Not yet. Uh, Prof, go ahead. Is it is it can, can be seen now? No, nope, not yet. Not yet, just hold on. I'm trying to get this uh, sharing going on. Let me see who's disabled participant sharing. So, all right. I share screen now. Okay. Yes, this is the one. Share. Okay, so can you see it now? Mm. Is it? Can you? You have started sharing the screen, uh, but there's nothing up yet. Uh, okay, I, I, I. Are you I, showing your slides? No. Nope. Can you see? No, not yet. Yeah, this is my slide. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. okay. It is already a screen sharing. You are screen yes. sharing now. Okay. Yeah, yep, I can now. see now. You can see now. Yep. Go yes. ahead. All right, okay, uh, this is the first caption, which I think uh, we need to actually uh, really seriously take note. Uh, inspiration uh, writing, inspiration uh, phrase. Uh, one's greatest challenge is to control oneself. And uh, you know, right now, most of us, uh, either we succeed or we fail, it's all because of element of self-control. So, as you know, to take this self-control can be a very daunting task to each and every one of us. Because sometimes it does bring a lot of effort. It does give you uh, some, client, some form of uh, difficulties to be in charge and to take control. So basically what self-control means is the ability to control oneself, one's emotions and one's desire especially in a difficult situation uh, because uh, in a very nice situation we are in, in a very comfortable situation, in, uh, in a situation where we are feeling so good about, uh, usually there is no element of uh, antagonistic towards us. But in difficult situation, obviously we feel threatened. So our emotion, and our impulses may be actually towards the negative side rather than the positive. So that's when we need to just uh, to take control of ourselves. 
So what is self-control? Basically, it is a cognitive process. It's an executive function. Uh, it is in our brain. It is uh, the way our front, uh, frontal cortex, uh, cortex uh, in the, in the uh, you know, high function of the brain is actually regulating our behavior. And usually it is to achieve specific goal. And it has what we call an inhibitory element, inhibitory control, that is ability to regulate our emotion, our thoughts and our behavior, especially when there are temptations and impulses to go for things. Uh, there may be uh, temptations and impulses to overindulge, to you know, overbehave, to be so excited, exaggerated and whatnot, which subsequently will end up uh, control uh, may lead to actually more difficulties and problematics to us. No? So it is uh, very important to have this self-control. Uh, so it is about the mind. It is about the cognitive, the way we see things, the way we think about things. Uh, so that's what we call the high executive function. Uh, there have many names to it. Uh, there are these four names that I want you to know. And I think uh, all of us are quite familiar with it. Uh, self-control, the other name can be self-restrain, able to restrain yourself from doing things uh, rather abruptly, uh, without thinking about things. So when you self-restrain, you actually take a pause, uh, you think about it first, uh, only then you can react or act on it. So that is a, a very important uh, a skill actually to adopt, uh, to be able to restrain yourself uh, from just going into a situation whereby to undo the situation can be a difficult one later. And subsequently, uh, you, the other name to it also, you have to have discipline. So it is uh, also equally the name of self-discipline can be used. Or you become master, self-mastery. You are good at actually controlling yourself. So you are a master to your own destiny. You are a master to your own personality and to your own self or the other name to it is called the willpower so it's having that willpower then you know uh, how to move forward uh, you don't give up easily you don't feel that you are always uh, not achieving what you're supposed to because with the willpower you move on uh, without any will obviously people cannot even take a step forward and as you know, self-control uh, can lead to a balanced person, can lead to a person in harmony, calmness, can actually uh, bring about determination, and the ability to do things uh, and have the willpower and actually can also have the characteristic of confidence. So that is how self-control have a lot of characteristics that you can actually uh, you know, uh, show up with that element of self-control. So why is it important? Obviously, uh, people who lack self-control often give in to impulsive behavior and emotion. And I can say impulsive behavior or emotion as such, as you can see, this is one of the impulsive behavior whereby your anger is very difficult to be controlled. Uh, mm -hmm. You can react first and you can do a lot of uh, silly things. You can hurt yourself, you can hurt others. Uh, your impulsive behavior can also end up with destructive behavior, uh, can end up with explosive behavior in that sense. At the end of the day, uh, it doesn't bring good to you. It hurts you and it hurts other people around you. Or actually, you can also end up doing uh, what we call active behavior. Right? Some people are unable to control themselves with the impulsion. They tend to actually overindulge in uh, alcohol, in drugs, in cigarettes, uh, and on top of that, they may also end up doing things like gambling. Uh, they may end up actually in the form of pornography. Uh, they may overwork themselves. They may overspend themselves. They may end up with internet and games kind of addiction. Oh, they have a lot of debts and things like that. And the other features are, uh, are actually uh, suggestive of self-injury or self-inflicted injury. Uh, deliberate self-harm is the other name to it. Uh, some people, based on impulsive nature, based on 
feelings, emotion that they are not controllable. They tend to hurt themselves. Well, for the reason that they say that by hurting themselves, they feel good about it. But unfortunately, uh, this feeling good is very temporary. All these so-called impulsive behavior, impulsive emotion, obviously, it brings up what we call the transmitters in your brain, the dopamine. The dopamine actually uh, make you feel good for a while. The dopamine actually is what we call the excitement kind of a transmitter that make everyone who has dopamine feel excited, feel good. But unfortunately, the dopamine uh, need to be more and more. Uh, so at the end of the day, that's why addiction come about. Because example, like if you win a lottery, if you win in any kind of a game uh, that you have uh, so, so gained kind of a thing, obviously it gives you the excitement and it gives you the dopamine. But unfortunately, as I said, you will crave for the dopamine. Uh, that's why eating also is another issue. Uh, some of us say uh, when uh, they are sad, when they are stressed, or when they're overexcited, they go for makan, they go for uh, drinking and whatnot, which is at the end of the day could cause a detrimental uh, complication to body. So, so these are the impulsive behavior that actually self-control is very important uh, for us to actually look at seriously. So for adult characteristic, adult personality, we need to look at if you are actually having a positively characters, characteristic correlated with self-control, you are actually a person with high conscientiousness and high emotional stability. So these are the two characteristics of an adult who are positively correlated with uh, self-control. But the opposite of it is when you are negatively correlated with your self-control, that means you are not in control of yourself. You have a tendency, the characteristic of very impulsive in nature. And sometimes you are what we call sensation seeking person. You look for the sensation that you want. Sometimes uh, feeling of pain, feeling of hurt, uh, feeling of, you know, uh, things that is not, even though it's not good to you, but you feel good when you have that feeling. So these are what we call the negative correlated correlation to self-control. Whereby even though the aftermath of what you did is not good, but you feel somehow with the dopamine, uh, so-called uh, efflux from your body, from your brain, you feel good for a while. And then it dies down and then you have to go for it again to achieve the same sensation of uh, feeling good about it. So that's why you keep repeatedly doing until at the end of the day, you become addictive. So you, you must take note whether are we emotionally stable? Are we conscious enough about ourselves, conscious in the sense of knowing what is right, knowing what is wrong, what is good, what is bad, what should, what should not. Or we just simply do things first without thinking. At the end of the day, we end up actually regretting what we have done. So, as you know, this is one of the impulsion or impulsivity that I myself experienced. Very difficult to get out of the situation. Is uh, actually what we call, it actually is already reaching a stage possibly. We can name it as uh, food addiction. Uh, because it's very difficult to stop uh, food addiction. Uh, when you see the same food over and over again, sometimes you're not even hungry. Uh, but you have a tendency to actually go for it have it and later then you regret it but then again the craving will come uh, you feel actually the good that you want and you can associate it when you associate that food with a feeling of goodness uh, even though you are actually initially upset but when you take food you feel good that's why you go on for it that's what we call craving for the uh, shots of dopamine within yourself but at the end of the day even though you don't really need it anymore you just go ahead subconsciously or unconsciously in a way keep doing the same habit and then you know the outcome of it uh, so self-control is basically the ability to control oneself and you become master over your desire and your appetite i think that is very important and those who are self-controlled they can handle what they want they can ensure that they do not over or under indulge there is a tendency for actually people who doesn't able to control themselves, especially the underindulged person. These are the cases of, as for example, anorexia nervosa, 
when they believe that they are, they are actually very thin, they are not uh, having a good uh, self-image, they believe they are ugly and whatnot, so they are not able to uh, actually wanting to eat and uh, because of that they end up with having trouble in their uh, so-called biology or their systems. Or whatever, you know? uh, that is because they were not able to control their way of looking at their image. They call it the dysmorphophobia. The way they look at themselves is very abnormal. An example of self-control, as I said, if you want a last cookie, but you use your willpower to avoid eating it, because you know it is you have already too much of it, uh, then that is what self-control. Basically, self-control talks about uh, actually uh, when you desire to have it, uh, there is the so-called the desire, uh, craving and whatnot, and you can't stop it because your so-called satisfaction center or we call it satiety center that usually people after they're hungry, they eat. Then when they eat, they're supposed to be satisfied and then they stop eating. But unfortunately, the satiety center is actually being, uh, in a way, being uh, suppressed. And at the end of the day, they keep on doing the things that they are doing because there is no such thing as feeling satisfied with it. Uh, what happened, as I said, because they demand that dopamine and everything that they want and uh, they do, which excite them, even though it's impulsive in nature, uh, the dopamine shoots up, they feel good. That's why they do, they eat, they do, uh, do, they do self injury, they do this, uh, all this negative behavior for the sake of the dopamine. And at the end of the day, they become addicted to that. So, this is uh, what uh, is very important as the underlying physiology that we need to know. So, somehow the satiety center or the satisfaction certain uh, that, uh, you know, after you have done something, you should stop, is actually become faulty. So they have three parts in uh, self-control. Uh, one, I think you need to monitor your thoughts. You need to monitor your feelings and you need to monitor the way you react to those things. I think until unless you become aware of it again, please come back to what we call, you cannot be a person who is automatic in nature doing things without knowing what they are doing. You must be very mindful about your thoughts, about your feelings, about your action. So, if you cannot monitor yourself, then obviously you will just do the same thing over and over again and ending up uh, towards the negative result over the good one. And then you must have a standard uh, as a guideline to steer you from a desired responses. So what are your standards? I think quite a number of us actually live our life without any particular standards that we are following. Uh, the benchmark that we are actually uh, referring to so without any standards, obviously, we tend to be able to actually do things uh, knowingly or unknowingly, possibly uh, not achieving the good result. And the other thing about self-control is you must have a strength, where the strength is the energy that you need to control these impulses. So a lot of people who are weak, they actually uh, have a very poor element of control because they don't feel strong enough to take charge, to take control. So strength, inner strength uh, is very important as a part of self-control. And way to master the self-discipline, uh, first and foremost, uh, quite a number of us need to actually, including myself, I can say, need to know my weaknesses, need to know our weaknesses. And without knowing our weaknesses, we don't know what we are dealing with. So if we can, Always, uh, I say at that point of time, those so-called stimulus that comes in front of us and the action that or the impulses that comes and the, the urges and the, the desire that we do things, why it happens, what are the weaknesses that comes along with it that make us do all those things. I think we need to get to know that seriously. Without sitting down, reflecting on those things, we will never be able to actually uh, handle our weaknesses. Uh, the second important aspect is actually it is very uh, difficult once you have already the temptation to resist temptation. Example, the temptation to eat, the temptation to overindulge into anything. Once you have the temptation, it is very difficult to resist the temptation because as I said, 
when you have the temptation itself, you already actually got uh, outflow of dopamine so high that you become so uh, craving for that. You have to do it. You have to satisfy that craving. But most important to fight problems, you must actually remove the temptation completely. Only then you can stop it. Example like the temptation to eat the sugary things, the temptation to overindulge in food and things like that. You must actually remove them. So in this case, if eating is your main agenda in life, so remove the temptation. I mean, eating is no more the main agenda. Uh, eating become very, very secondary. So similarly with all those other impulsions, uh, all the other uh, temptation or all the other desires, if you have to, if you can, you have to remove them. Without removing them, and if they come already in front of you, it's very difficult okay, to yeah. resist the temptation. Uh, subsequently, you must have a clear goal. And once you have a clear goal, obviously, you also have to have a clear execution of your plan. All right, what to do, how to do it, and whatnot. And uh, you have to be persistent. And to be persistent, you have to be disciplined. And so keep doing it again and again, what you really want to do, what goals you want to achieve. Because as people say that, uh, obviously, without any persistence, you will always fail. Right, so you have to be repeatedly doing it until it becomes second nature to you. So discipline is very important here, and also create a new habit. Uh, make it a very simple way of creating a new habit. Example, like uh, you know, if in the morning if you are not hungry, you take a very light so-called uh, drinks to start with, because usually hunger sometimes it is not because of the food; it is just because you have, you are lacking water. So if you drink enough water, possibly hunger will go so. But once you actually take food and a big meal, uh, obviously... Uh, so I, should, I just need my friends to... And because people tend to eat more and more. So eat often and healthy, obviously. Uh, there are a few things that you must know, but uh, what we call eat often here is not over in doubt. Uh, is adequate more you have to eat. Uh, that is important here. Yeah. I mean, somehow you can eat small bits of this maybe, but can be very few. Uh, you can eat healthy food. Uh, usually, you can, again, as I said, uh, you know, take in more fibers to start with, uh, more of fruits and whatnot, uh, before taking big uh, meal on carbohydrate, fat, and uh, you know, sugary items. Uh, you can change your perception uh, about your willpower. A lot of people actually did not really trust themselves whether they have the willpower to go on and to do things. But actually all of us have that, obviously. But individually, we may be very weak with our willpower, so we need to have groups. We need to have a good uh, support and whatnot that to, to come up with our willpower. So it is not really easy sometimes to do it alone. All right. At the end of the day, also have your backup plan. If thing doesn't uh, doesn't go the way you should, uh, plan A doesn't go. You must have plan B or plan C and whatnot. Uh, so the other uh, ways to master your self discipline is again, as I said, be persistent and be focused on your goal, what you really want to do, what you really want to achieve. So this this uh, even though uh, slide appear to be very crowded, very busy. But I just want you to actually look at these five or six lines from how to strengthen your self-control. Number one, the basic of how to strengthen yourself uh, is basically uh, ask yourself, do you really want the consequence of what you want to put off or what you want to do, right? And then you always have what we call keep the big picture in mind. Sometimes uh, things that you want to do may be good for you, but look at the big picture first. You know, sometimes uh, things that all this while, it is very important to put it off, but you still believe that you need to do it. Uh, so you must really consider it seriously because not all the things that you need to do is sometimes good for you. All right? And then the other thing is always have this inner debate between the impulsive nature of you and the conscientious nature of you. 
you know as you said that yeah, there's always an angel and the devil within us the angel might be actually uh, trying to bring us or put us to a, a very good uh, positive state but the devil is trying always to pull us away and make us make all the mistakes that we can in this case about eating and what not uh, and then subsequently there's also always remember there's an aim to put uh, your willpower where your goals are obviously uh, focus on your goal so that is the basic the basic uh, on the right topmost uh, the pink color line uh, you can focus on that and subsequently the foundation of self-control is always remember your goal the green line remember your goal uh, always uh, look into yourself the self-care and always actually be aware of yourself the self-awareness and uh, these things that you need to avoid, these are the warning things that you need to avoid. You must have good sleep, enough sleep. If you are sleep deprived, you become weak. Your fitness actually goes down and you are easily succumb to any kind of uh, stresses. And also remember, sedentary lifestyle is not good for us. And uh, so if that is the case, uh, we have to be more active now. I think uh, the so-called 21st century or even the 20th century uh, lifestyle is actually start to get us into more problem in health and uh, in psychology and obviously eating can be over or can even be under or can even be only a very one-sided kind of a diet example for our diet usually we are so fat and the sugar and the salt and subsequently we are very lacking in the fiber we are lacking in the what vitamins and all the other uh, so-called uh, nutrients uh, that is very necessary so it's not the balanced kind of a diet the other thing is the psychology part we feel shame about ourselves we see we see if, uh, we feel a uh, low self-esteem uh, low self-worth uh, these are the things uh, that actually uh, bring us down yeah? and at the end of the day we may also have these thoughts eh? Uh, thoughts that actually uh, belittling ourselves, ridiculing ourselves. Or we try to push our thoughts uh, uh, down and we then did not deal with it accordingly. And some of us were indulged in drinking and uh, in smoking and drugs and whatnot. The lifestyle strategy to strengthen the control, obviously, always remember sleep is very important, food is another important, and the mind and the psychology is also another part. So remember, the, uh, we have been talking about the soul, the mind, and the body, or the body, the mind, and the spirit. So these are the three areas that we need to actually uh, strengthen to be better in our self-control. Then obviously create our new norms, our new social norms, right? Uh, first and foremost, uh, we actually should be learning from things around us. We see good things, we see bad things, we need to make a choice. We see how this uh, possibly, uh, this is where we are worried about peer influence. Uh, seeing others behaving badly uh, can, impact, uh, can impact on our self-control. Whether it's good or bad, I think that is uh, our choice. Yeah? Uh, the other thing is about hanging out with the right group. So, for example, like Felicia and Francis talking about this uh, fitness, exercise, and whatnot. So, we should be actually uh, grouping with this kind of group. And currently, with the COVID-19, obviously, whether we like it or not, we cannot just stay home and working from home with a lacking exercise, lacking uh, actually socializing. Uh, these are all uh, norms that we need to maintain. Uh, simply, uh, the other part is the red line where we talk about simple self-control tricks. Uh, remind yourself of your goal is one of them. Uh, keep the source of temptation as far away as possible. In this case, as I can say about sweets, about uh, food, you know, if you can avoid those places, you should avoid because once you are there, it's very difficult to resist. That's why if you go to any restaurant, you go to any eating place, there will be a lot of temptation for you to actually difficult to resist. Uh, so if possible, don't even go to that place. That is what we call keep away yourself from the temptation. And then use this method of what we call wait, take time out, wait for 10 minutes before you give in to your temptation. Example, like you can still go to the, to the cafeteria to go and makan, but uh, while you are there, you just hold on, don't pick it up, think about it first. 
whether you really need it or not and things like that if you then at the end of the day you decide if you have to you have to be you have to get it how much if you don't really need it you don't even pick it up so that is where you learn how to be in charge of yourself the other aspect is always what we call be compassionate to yourself right be forgiving to yourself uh, never always blame yourself for things that you've done uh, possibly you are considered as in a way sometimes forgetful uh, sometimes you think that you are stupid or maybe you self criticize uh, you are not good able to control but don't don't be harsh to yourself because the one way that people are getting into this so called addictive behavior or self defeating behavior or or self injury behavior or things that people do that could hurt themselves badly as a consequence of those things that they did example over in dark and alcohol drugs and what not is because actually they are doing what we call self punishment they believe that they are not worth being a good person anymore so they punish themselves so that is the reason why they become losing control they become low in their self esteem and at the end of the day as you see the blue line these are the thing they become stress and you know? Uh, so these are the things that you need to seriously actually look into. So these are the way to actually strengthen your self control. So stay in control. Stop what you are about to do or say. Think about your choice and do what will please God and please you. So I think most important is is about you. It's about your achievement. It's about things that you really want. So if you know what you really want, obviously, uh, it makes you feel good. Uh, the thing that you can do right, it makes you feel bad, even though in the first instant you thought it will feel good because of that dopamine thing. But subsequently, when you already gone into the situation where you did the wrong thing, you feel bad about it. So you think about it first before you do things with your emotion rather than with your thinking. Right. So impulsion and emotion is usually kills you in a way either slowly or subsequently so five ways to improve your self control so as i said first and foremost remove your temptation so usually uh, it's so difficult to resist temptation as i said uh, because a lot of studies have shown uh, to resist is very difficult so it is best to completely remove the things that tempt you to to go on for uh, example as i said the food or the drugs or the behavior that, that defeat yourself and whatnot so always uh, measure your progress always uh, reflect always to look at uh, how how actually you have achieved and uh, and again uh, this is also another big topic learn how to manage yourself and manage your stress manage your time manage your whatever that have, is within you manage your body manage your mind manage your soul these are all very important aspects so be a better person a well developed to become a mature and wise person prioritize thing and forgive yourself as we have seen in these three that we saw just now yeah. so uh, fruits of self control obviously you become your masters of your mood you able to actually watch your words you did not over uh, exaggerated or using word that at the end of the day you feel be grateful of it you know you can restrain your reaction your action or your reaction uh, you can have a very proper schedule in your life you can manage everything wisely and you can maintain good health so this is all the outcomes of a good self control so this is the last word i would say if you learn self control you can master anything so in psychology uh, it is very important actually uh, a person is what he or she made of himself, right? Uh, it is everything that is happening to us is actually in our mindset, uh, the way we think about it. And once we start thinking about it, the way we react to it, the way we feel for it. So I guess that is uh, the end of my talk. And I think we can go for the discussion, okay? All right. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, okay, good. So I actually like the, the last slide that you have. If you learn self-control, you can master everything. Yeah, I think that's really, really true.
Yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Prof? Okay, so I think Prof is a bit muted. Uh, okay, no problem. So I think it's a really good session. Um, I actually like the uh, the second last slide as well, which is which we spoke about uh, fruits of self control. Uh, when you actually do self control, you master your mood, you watch your words, um, restraint of reaction. Meaning you don't do um, you don't jump into conclusion or you don't just make simply make. Um, uh, you know, react to a certain situation. Uh, you stick to a schedule, uh, which means that uh, you're more likely to stay on track with what you do, discipline-wise. Uh, you manage your money more wisely and you maintain a good health. So good health also means uh, good mental health and also uh, physical health as well. So we spoke about how, uh, you know, to control food, to control uh, the uh, cravings and uh, you know, or probably like trying to procrastinate exercise and things like that, right? So, having that self control is so so important. Um, okay, Prof got disconnected. Uh, Coach Francis, are you there? Okay. Okay, Prof is in. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I'm following very good. All right, great. So, Prof is coming back in. So, um, do you do you have anything to add from uh, his uh, presentation? I think uh, it's very clear. Uh, those uh, we understand how to strengthen, and also uh, uh, try to be aware of the fruits of uh, being in self control. Because uh, manifestation already, you know already, you are in self control. So if your fruits are, or your fruits of your 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 behavior or your your happenings are around you, if it's not it's not uh, uh, I mean good to yourself, you should also go back and revisit some of the areas how to strengthen the self control. I think the chart is very powerful, very good chart. Yeah. So that chart should be framed out. Actually, I put on our 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 desk there so that we can constantly, uh, you know. Be reminded. Very, yeah. very nice, very powerful chat. Thank mm. you so much for sharing. Good. Yeah. For me, I think um, you know, it's not even about having just discipline. Yeah, self-control gives you more of a it's more of a term that says uh, you know, I'm in control of my action. So when we say that, oh, I don't have the discipline, I don't have the willpower, it's almost like we are actually, you know, blaming or putting another uh, another sort of uh, putting the responsibility on something, you know, oh, this is nothing got to do with me, it's my discipline uh, or it's actually my, you know, uh, my willpower, I have lack of willpower. So I think I think putting the uh, phrase uh, self-control, I think it's a really good thing, meaning we are taking responsibility. So, um, yeah, so I, I really, uh, like I mentioned just now, Prof, before you got cut off, um, I really like the, um, the second last slide, slide that you have as well, which is the yeah. self-control. So that's what also Coach Francis has uh, spoken about. Uh, he said uh, that we should frame it up and then remind ourselves constantly. I think uh, what we actually need is reminder um, and also yeah. gives me a very good, uh, uh, sort of a reminder with the conversation that I had with the client today. Um, so I feel that, uh, you know, she has been able to uh, quit taking uh, things like creamer and uh, sugar and her coffee, uh, you know, things that, you know, adds on to a calorie and she's trying to get healthy and trying to move more and she did like squats today. So um, I feel that even though I'm not there with her right now uh, because of the whole uh, CMCO in KL and Selango, uh, I feel that because of we started something off and then uh, because of that, uh, you know, having the accountability partner and also uh, she started taking uh, responsibility of like, oh, this is something that, you know, I need to do. 
And uh, as a coach, you know, it's not, I can give you 1,000 advice, but, uh, or 1,000 ways how to do it, right? But if you yeah. don't take up responsibility and practice uh, self-control on your um, daily actions, yeah. uh, I think it, it, you know, it doesn't work, right? So yes. um, I feel that this is something that, you know, I, I, the, this uh, whole session, the whole sharing that you did, it actually uh, resonates very well. Uh, very, yeah. I can yeah. relate to it very well. In fact, this is what happens every day in our life. Uh, so sometimes we are in control, but most mm. of the time we are out of control. Mm. So I think I think that is the thing uh, we need to take note. Mm -hmm. uh, when we are mindless, we are out of control. Mm. When we are mindful, we become controlled. And you know, between mindfulness and mindlessness, 95% of our daily activity are in a mindless state. Mm. Uh, only 5% or the most is 10%. We are mindful. Usually, we become mindful very short while, then we end up again being mindless. Mm. Uh, so I think uh, to, to take control, we have to keep it mindful all the time. True, yeah. true. It's all yeah. interconnected. Yeah. Okay, one more uh, one question, uh, Prof. Like when you say being mindful, right? Okay, because when we say self control, we 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 also say that having self control in terms of uh, you know when how we react to situation. And also, uh, yeah, more to focus on reaction and situation and, and our words spoken yeah. to people around us, especially our loved ones, our friends, our colleagues, and you know, people that we interact with them every day. Yeah. So, you know, I think 24 hours now with the whole, uh, even, you know, I think it's a called confused MCO, right? Everybody yeah. is so confused, I think, <laughs> especially now. You know, it's not just financial, it's not just... Um, uh, you know, men in mentally, physically, everything, you know. So how does one in 24 hours, right? Okay, mm. minus the time where we are asleep, lah, right? So um, let's say we have about eight hours of sleep, okay? So we have another uh, 16 hours a week, right? So that's mm. 16 hours. I know for myself even, I can start my day with like, a, you know, a positive, uh, you know, exercise, uh, a positive um uh, you know, thinking good, eating well, and then throughout, like when I go along the day, there will mm -hmm. be times that I feel, oh, I think this, I think everybody, I think a lot of people will resonate with this as well. Be mm -hmm. we, we just have this overthinking thoughts and, you know, things that like pop up and we, we keep on focusing on that thing, right? Uh, so, uh, oh, why this person didn't do that? Or why is this happening? Or why is that, you know? So how do you... Is there any advice on how do you uh, be mindful of it or what kind of actions or what kind of practice that you do uh, so, so to bring us back to our present moment? So basically, uh, you must uh, know that actually uh, you must keep in mind what is your intention all the time. Uh, example like, are you in the situation of you having what you call now people may end up with what we call we are facing. Because we are stuck in it and we believe when we are stuck in it, we, we cannot overcome it. So we are actually, uh, in a way, become very uh, unfortunate uh, that uh, we are, how should I say, we can reach what we call a helpless situation. So we should not feel that way because we know who we are, we know what we want. We know how we should be doing things. So because of that, then there is no such thing as being fatigued or so. All right? So uh, if, if you know your intention every day, you keep reminding, as I said just now, in the, in the table, you must always remember what is the purpose, what we really want to do. So that is the thing that you must actually uh, look into. So there is no such thing as if you are in charge of yourself, you end up like how you say you feel. Uh, you, are, you know, you're only quite good in the day, in the morning. By the afternoon, you reach up to the stage whereby you actually don't know what you're doing. Uh, I think if you are sure of yourself, if you are clear of yourself, you know what you want to do, you keep reminding yourself of the goal, you keep looking at yourself seriously, this is what I need to achieve despite the situation that I'm in, I think you are actually very safe because you know you are in charge. 
Don't let situation take time. Don't mm. let other things take time. Be yourself. Know mm. who you are. Yeah. But to do that, it is a lot of, these are all skills. Even self-control is actually a skill based. So to do a skill thing, you must be able to actually mm. uh, getting better and better uh, in terms of the way you overcome situation for yourself. Mm. So I think uh, we should not feel that way. Uh, and people should not feel, despite, despite whatever the trouble that they are, despite thinking that they are in a situation very stressful, they are stuck at home or they are stuck with the situation, they cannot do things that they should do. But as you know, there are times sometimes we need a retreat. There are times sometimes we can move forward. There are times sometimes we have to take time to think about things. So these are sometimes the chances for us to look at the things the better mm. way and just move on, take on to see that we are not prepared. Yeah, I think is to take note of your feelings at the moment. Um, so that's also practicing self control and not, uh, you know, putting, uh, making rash decisions or overreacting or reacting to it more like responding to it, embracing. Uh, your thoughts at that moment yeah because uh, I think for a lot of uh, yeah I think it's overwhelming for many of us uh, in different ways right so uh, I feel that we need to have um, a support system uh, talk to good friends you know reach out to people uh, sometimes it's to you know look into things that you can control versus the things that you cannot control, right? Um, so uh, yeah, so I, I believe I believe that that is what uh, you know I'm trying to also uh, figure it out by you know knowing about myself. If I face this situation with other people that also need support in my circle, I will be able to uh, understand them as well. Yeah, so I think it's very important for us now to support each other because more so, um, I find that sometimes lending a listening ear, uh, but you know, you do not want also to give wrong advice, right? So you want to actually be there and support to, you know, your friends and um, your close contacts. Uh, yeah, I, I believe most important is that in any, any one of us, uh, if we want to help people, we be a good listener first. Mm. We actually understand how they look at things, how they think about it, and then to, only then maybe we can understand them clearly. How then we can support them? Uh, we believe sometimes we thought that we are doing it right, but unfortunately, it may not be uh, actually the proper thing to do with them. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, true enough, you can always keep in touch with people around you uh, because we are not completely untouchable, uh, uncommunicable. Uh, I think we are not like in war, in the real war, whereby everything breaks down. But in this case, it, it, everything is then it's fine. It's like usual, except for the only thing is that we cannot really meet up like before. We cannot go out. Everything is still there for us actually to capitalize on. So it's not it's not like typical the war that a lot of people like last time you remember our you know, elders keep telling us a story whereby you know they have to hide they cannot go out they cannot see people they don't know what is the story goes on with other friends relatives and whatnot so this is not the real thing this is not the same thing so we are still in communication. Mm. By the way, Prof, I think you need you have you are online on two phones, so you yeah. do need to yeah. mute mute your phone. I mute my phone. No, you have to mute it because uh, there's two audios coming from your side. I okay. I uh, I mute already my phone. Okay, no, but, but the audio is still coming up. Okay, just turn on I off the phone. Okay, can you hear from? Yeah, let's go. You know, it's clear. Let's put it away. Yeah, because, uh, okay. Yeah, is it okay? There's a lot of disturbance. There no. is still there is still sound from your phone. Can you lock off from your phone? 
Okay, let me lock off on my phone. Yeah. I'm not too sure what happened. I cannot do that lock off. I guess so, I guess so. Okay, done. Is it okay? okay done. All right, better. Sorry, sorry. Okay, Some technical no. problem. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. Yeah, because uh, we want the video so that you know to to so yeah, I know, I know. So the video is not okay, so we have a few new people in the group. I think maybe uh, probably your contacts or your students. So there is uh, you know, there is Jasram, there's Nurin from just now, Nurhani, Najwa, there's Shafika, there's Nini, there's also Rabika. So if you have any questions, uh, you can also put in the chat box, um, and uh, let me check. If I have any questions uh, from Facebook, uh, so far I don't see any um, questions yet. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Coach Francis, you have any you have any question from your side? Yeah, I just want to add on something, guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the 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 the, the chart there, the, the how to strengthen your self control the chart. Yeah, actually, those are all the intervention uh, so-called processes yeah and, and also please pay attention to the nutrition part the food yes because you see we are the biological body and the biological body will win over your willpower your willpower will lose to it man. so no matter how much of willpower you got you will still lose your biological body because it's controlled by all the hormones this and that yeah. which all these things needs a lot of nutrients to actually uh, to function physiologically so it's very important to pay, pay attention to a, to a very good start of the day. We are very strong uh, nutrition first, you know, low calorie, high fiber, a lot of hydration. Then most of all is exercise. And then uh, practice mindful breathing, practice mindfulness. I think these are all the areas that we need to, uh, uh, processes of the uh, conscious and unconscious intervention. Yeah. As you said, the uh, Prof did mention, if you already don't cut the temptation, but you're in already, you cannot control already because the dopamine will take over you. Okay, so you need to satisfy it. So it's very important that we be we, we aware, uh, mindful, uh, watchful of our thoughts and our feelings. If you're almost moving to there already, we have to pull out. Otherwise, uh, we will be able, we will uh, not to, we will be, uh, we will be uh, over already, then we were able, not able to. Uh, uh, cut that kind of uh, so-called biological control. Yes. So I think uh, these are areas that we 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 need to be mindful and uh, definitely the the. Ch I think that is itself already uh, uh, very clear. Uh, all the processes, all the all the all the zone zone zone, uh, different colors. We revisit all those areas and get familiarized with it, yeah. and uh, that is a very helpful chart. Thank you so much again. Okay. Sure. I think I think this is very important here, yeah, as you say. Uh, if you are in, it's very difficult to get out. When you are out, you better don't try to get in. So that's when the situation <laughs> is. Uh, you see, you can still play around the periphery, but make sure that you are in charge. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't get sucked in. Once you get sucked in, it's very difficult to get. It's, it's like you are in a in a so-called washing machine. When it start turning, it start churning you. There's no way you can get out of it. Uh, the door even closed very tightly. So well, I think, some I think, people, yeah, some people are just curious, right? <laughs> they want to yeah. try. <laughs> yeah, this curiosity is another big issue here. Mm. Uh, actually, curiosity also uh, uh, initiate dopamine release. Uh, mm. The person get addiction into drug, person get addiction into substance, uh, person get addiction into food. It's all because of curiosity. Uh, so sometimes curiosity kills a cat. Call it. Yeah. <laughs> so be careful about that. So uh, because, we are not you know, a cat, but I think yeah, I think it's success. Cat's got nine lives, but they can well, kill the cat too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are not so much tougher. All right, we are not. Yeah, we, are we are not, not tougher tough. than cats. Yeah. We are not tough at all. So don't uh, you know they say like don't play play lah, right? So ah. I think that's very important. There's some yeah. wisdom. Uh, Portugal has some wisdom lah. Yeah. So <laughs> if you really, if you think you can deal with it, you can actually try it out. Mm. But you usually we lose the battle because if you are in, it's, it's like you know you, you know this whirlpool. Uh, you go to this so called uh, you know ice region and you do yeah, know about yeah, the, the yeah. pool around there. Yeah. You yeah, thought yeah. you can swim. You are a good swimmer, but once oh. you are in, they suck mm. you in. 
Yeah. Uh, that's when you become panicky. That's when you become anxiety. And yeah. that's when you lose actually your ability, your sense to take over and take charge. This mm-hmm. is what it is all about. Once you are trapped, you are trapped. Yeah. Be careful about being into the trap. Yeah. Mm. That's right. Just Ram, Nurin, anything? Any you questions want to add on? on the floor? Yeah. Najwa. You can share some of your experience, you know, because this is a platform for us to talk about. Yeah, very good. There's no jangan malu, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is sharing, sharing. Yeah. You can, I think, uh, you can chat or you can also unmute yourself as well. Yeah, you can. Actually. Let's see. Yeah, you, we welcome all of you to join and uh, actively, you know, participate in the discussion. Now, oh, Madam Rabika is also here. Uh, Madam Rabika is from Wawasan Open University. Ah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Where is the foundation uh, uh, students, uh, this uh, faculty. Mm. Yeah, hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, hello. welcome. Oh, welcome. Thank you. I, I've been in a bit late because I, so I don't know what is the, I have been late in this uh, group. Okay. Yeah. So I don't have no idea actually what no to problem. ask. No ah, I see. Okay, let me just summarize. So we've been okay. talking about self-control. Um, and uh, the different uh, benefits and also like, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the difference uh, between uh, how do uh, now behavior in such and uh, how, you know, in terms of, uh, I think Prof used a, a, a good analogy on diet, uh, you know, in terms of how do we stop the temptation and, you know, the process of that thoughts. Um, so, and the benefits of self-control basically is a lot of things like managing our thoughts and, you uh, uh, managing our fitness and our mental health and a lot of things uh. so um so yeah but uh, feel free we will actually to we will actually review uh, uh, uh save this video and we will actually upload it on youtube and also it will be available on our uh facebook page uh on the fit unit okay so fit unit um is basically um where we are under the umbrella of PRKPP and the uh, fit unit is a, a fitness and lifestyle, a smarter way to work out. So we, we uh, collaborate uh, pro- between Prof. Muhammad, uh, myself and Coach Francis um, to, and also uh, Dr. Siva uh, on this Ask the Experts uh, platform so that we can get a more well-informed uh, community um, and also, this is like, I think, week number 10. So we have covered topics like uh, parenting and uh, from to relationships, to mental health, to even uh, COVID-19, to mental health, stress management, uh, wellness. We sp- uh, last week, we spoke about uh, an initiative by a young entrepreneur, uh, Harif, uh, on the... Um, a COVID-19 uh, a self-care kit. So a lot of all these uh, topics will be in uh, on every Saturday night at 9 p.m. So yeah, so feel free to join us. Okay, great. Um, so uh, we have a question from Najwa. Uh, how do you not push yourself too much and at the same time being productive? Like you have a ton of assignment to do mm-hmm. and you organize it daily. Yeah, but there yeah. are some days you get upset because you can't fulfill those expectations and of completing those assignments in one day. Uh, this is uh, most important is you have to prioritize. Uh, prioritize is the first thing that all of us need to do because we cannot do multitasking. We cannot do everything one go. Uh, we have to have time for each and every uh, thing that we need to do. Uh, as that we have, we must know which is the most important one, which are the urgent one, which are the one that can be actually put the second or the third level. Uh, once we have prioritized, uh, then we can actually strategize on how to go about doing it. Uh, yes, true enough, everyone sometimes demand the same uh, so-called uh, time to actually submit. Uh, I believe quite a number of our lecturers have been doing that too. Uh, there are many lecturers uh, which demand that they are, 
their so-called their homework need to be submitted on the same day. Uh, so that is another element, another element of what we call if you are actually highly uh, emotionally intelligent, you learn how to negotiate with people. Uh, sometimes you need to tell the truth, what you have got, what you have to do, what are the things that you have got in you that you need to complete for the day. Uh, so if, if you can't get it, get it done accordingly, you must actually speak up, you must tell the truth, you must learn how to relate to these people so that they understand you. Uh, so because a lot of time people don't understand what you are facing. But once they understand you, I think it will become simple, it will become easier. Because all of us, in a way, are kind people. Uh, we can actually, uh, actually I can tell you, most of us are compassionate. Most mm. of us are very empathetic and things like that. So the only thing is that because we don't understand, we don't know what is our, your self, our duty to tell people, uh, who we are, how we can do, what we are supposed to do, how many things that we need to do. I think be truthful in that sense is, is actually help you a lot. So yeah. besides prioritizing, uh, besides able to negotiate, uh, besides able to actually, I think uh, most important is actually uh, create a relationship that is very conducive uh, between the two parties, between you and anyone that you are uh, actually having any relationship. A mutual relationship, a trusting relationship, an understanding relationship. Uh, because I think without a relationship that is cordial, that is mutual, uh, that is so-called, you know, uh, so uh, in a way, uh, give and take to each other, uh, that is when the problem start. Uh, yeah. Because the other party always believes that they are the only one who's important. Uh, mm -hmm. They may end up being selfish and we may, uh, may, we may end up uh, as a student, become the victim. Uh, but I believe all of us are supposed to live up to that level. That's why when I talk about multiple intelligence, these are very important. Mm. So, you know, your emotional intelligence is important besides your intellectual intelligence. And on top of that, your body intelligence, your uh, kinesthetic or the body uh, so-called uh, PQ, the EQ, the SQ, the IQ, and, and whatnot. So we need to develop all those things. Mm. So... I, I, all these need to be learned. All and then may I add maybe like things like it, how skills are not a simple. Yeah. yeah. May I add if let's say I think um like as students with assignments or even actually working adults, you know, uh, I have, yeah. you know, uh, people friends that you know have to start working, you know, because they get so stressed up, you know, they have to wake up so early to actually if the first thing that they do is to work. Then, uh, you know, after a while, everybody realizes that, you know, there's only, there's more to uh, life than just work or your assignments. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you find that yourself, uh, you know, sort of like mm -hmm. not productive, even if you stare at your assignment, let's say you have eight hours, but if you don't feel motivated or you get stressed about doing it, I think it's good to take half an hour or 20 minutes yeah. to do something that you uh, can de-stress uh, or wake up, you know, the first thing that you do is to make sure that you do some stretching or some exercises or um, have a good breakfast. So that will give you some clarity um, and also give you, put you in a good mood, right? And uh, you'll be able to be more productive. So that's, a, that's not, not pushing yourself and you are productive at the same time. Because at the yeah. end of the day, some people, they just stare at one thing, but they don't get anything done because they, they don't yeah. even feel good about themselves for that yeah. moment. They can't, they can't even move forward, actually. Yeah. Always remember the first thing in all of us that we need to actually fulfill is the rest, the sleep. Mm. Mm. Without the sleep, without the proper rest, without the body able to recuperate over the night, we will not be able to actually face with any other task. That's why yeah. sleep deprivation is the enemy number one that all of us are facing now. Because we did, we did not have enough resting, the body has not able to re-energize when we were resting or sleeping. Unfortunately, we have a tendency to actually, uh, in a way, actually destroy our own restful night sleep. 
Uh, remember, when we have things to do, we decided to get it done. Uh, so we actually break the rhythm already, our sleeping rhythm. Uh, you know, remember when we were our elders, our parents and our grandparents last time, by the evening, by 8 o'clock or so, they're already very sleepy to sleep. And they'll get a good night's sleep until actually 3 or 4 o'clock in the night, in the morning, where actually they already have enough. They will wake up and they will feel fresh. But for us, even though by 10 o'clock when we, we are supposed to be sleepy, we fight against it. We don't want to sleep. That's when we take coffee. Some of us go and you know, eat a lot more. Uh, that's when we destroy our own actually uh, body rhythm. Uh, yeah. So then we blame ourselves. I think another issue that we have now is that in this so-called uh, this so-called uh, world, people are working in shift, and working in shift is actually is bad. Because you cannot be an uh, night owl. You cannot be a person who actually a mm -hmm. night bird who doesn't sleep. Uh, you want to sleep in the day, but you want to be awake in the night. So you are completely changed your, yourself. Night is supposed to be for sleep. Day is supposed to be for work. Uh, but we destroy all those things already based on whatever reason. We want to get money la, for economic reason, la, for work reason. La. But unfortunately, actually, that is why we call our own internal nature is being destroyed. Uh, so I think I think uh, for whoever that uh, in that kind of a trouble already, uh, you can you can work this thing out yourself. You mm -hmm. must get assistance. You must mm -hmm. get guide. You must get help. You must come forward to ask for the help. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you are going to go again. As I said, you are in that machine, that washing machine, where you can never get out of it. Mm -hmm. And when things go on and on and on, it will tire you. It will make you more chronic. Stress, when it becomes chronic, you know the effect of it. All of us need the stress because it pushes us to do something. But when it goes bad, it goes worse, we can't anymore in charge, in control, it's going to hurt us. So that's why I don't allow those things to happen. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot do, obviously, uh, you have to do take rest first. You cannot just push even though you don't, you know that you have, won't have the productivity anymore. Mm -hmm. But then again, you are, you feel so guilty because you need to complete those things. Uh, previously, I have always advised people, uh, if work means for eight hours, so if work for eight hours, if let's say you start in the morning at six or at seven in the office or at eight in the office, you complete that eight hours fully productive for that eight hours. Then when you go back, there's no more work for you. It is self-time. It is me time. It is family time. It is responsibility time for the family, for the wife, for the kids. It is for other time, your religious time, your recreational time. Then your sleep time. So actually you can divide into three parts. Eight hours of work, eight hours of self time and family time and whatever social time and eight hours of sleep. So if you can do that, you will have a better time management better self-management. It doesn't even hurt you badly. But people actually go beyond that time. Work for now 18 hours, 16 hours, and then you destroy your relationship with the wife. You destroy your relationship with the children. You'd say that money is the matters here, but then how much money if you have, but then if you destroy every other thing, it is not worth it anymore. Mm. So be careful about that. Right. So that's good. I uh, hope that answer your question, um, Najwa. And also, uh, thank you so much, Prof, for the sharing tonight. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, so we will be uploading this video on YouTube. And also, it's a, it will be available after this on our Facebook page as well. So join us for our coming um, week. So our October will be coming to an end. Yes. soon wow i know it's uh amazing uh what a year uh, of a, a few months uh, could make a difference to a whole year right so i think most important thing is to uh start putting these uh little things in to practice uh start prioritizing what you want and uh and also uh plan for what you want to achieve so we have about two more months, right, to 2021. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do we want to make 2020 a mem memorable one, regardless of whatever the situation is, because uh, we can focus on what we can control rather than what we cannot control, right? Yeah. So thank you, everybody. Uh, I, I, you're welcome. I just got, 
I just got one last word. Always remember, mm -hmm. you cannot bite so big a cake. You can <laughs> use a bite size that you can have. So yeah, actually, you won't enjoy every, it, right? <laughs> every day matters. Yes. To every success, step matters. The next every two, day. Mac, to, to, to success two months from now, is all about today. It's about mm. the present. Yep. If you are satisfied with the present, you did very well, you'll be surprised. At the end of the day, everything turns out well. Great. Yeah. Yep. I yeah I think that's perfect uh, to end this uh, call. So thank you everybody um, and uh, have a good rest of the weekend. Um, and we'll see you guys next week. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah, okay. Bye, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Good night. Stay safe. Stay strong. Good night. Good night. Okay. <laughs>